Word Church. Stand with us today as we worship. fights for us.
I don't know about you, but I'm grateful that he never has lost a battle. I mean, when we think about how many battles in life there are to fight and how we can look back at every one of them and say that God has never lost any one of them. Is that shout news this morning? Is that shout news this morning? Come on, y'all shout for it then. It's okay to shout when we come into church. Oftentimes we think it's not, but it's one of the best places to shout, the best place to dance, the best place to give God praise. As a matter of fact, there's a song, and maybe you can resonate with it, but it says, I can't forget, I still remember the place you found me, and I surrender. When your grace covered my shame and saw my need, you gave me hope, hope and the future. My heart is yours now and forever. I am loved. Only because you first loved me. Let's sing this together. And I love you, Jesus. I There's a church right here. Your sacrifice is overwhelming, suffered and died because you love me. I'm alive only through Christ who first loved me. Saying, I love.
There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its words. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest on earth you know this simple chord sing oh how I love Jesus oh how I love Jesus time we lift our voice oh how I love Jesus sing it from your heart oh how I love Jesus oh how Father, thank you for the simple truth that we are loved today. Thank you, Lord, because you gave in us when you created man the capacity to love and be loved. And today, Lord, we give and we receive. Thank you for loving us. When we were unlovable, you loved us anyway. When, when none pitied us, when none turned aside to look at us, you did. And I thank you, Lord, for loving us today with a love that doesn't fail, it doesn't fade, it never falters. Help us to feel that today. Help us to feel Lord, that we stand here loved, not because we've been perfect, but because your love is perfect. And we receive it today. In Christ's name we've gathered. In Christ's name we pray. Everybody said amen. Amen. As the children are being dismissed today to their classes, you're seated. Man, it's hard to believe we're in June already, isn't it? I mean, it's June. And... Uh, I'm glad you're here. Some folks say, you know, are heading out this way and that, school's out, and you made it here today, and I'm so glad to see you. Uh, uh, Lexus, if you're watching today, your, some of your friends are here. Dylan and Bailey are here. And so that's what you get for being up there in the northeast. But come on back home. Uh, <clears throat> Bailey, good job up here today, wherever you went. Team, hey, let's, let's thank the team here and back there that <laughs> helps make it happen. If you're at home and people watch every every week live with us, and then through the week a number of people join and, and watch our service, and, and so we welcome you. We hope that today you'll be blessed. 
Um, locally, let me just say to you, in your bulletin, we put a little something. People have been talking around here uh, for a bit and uh, wanting to get together and have some fellowship and connection. And, and so uh, for the being, we got something we're calling the silver spoons. Uh, you may not have been born with one in your mouth, but that's a target for 50 and up. But, you know, we don't check IDs. And so if you'd like to be involved, the spoon kind of suggests, too, we like to eat. And so, you know, fellowship is an important part of, of uh, church life. I mean, I didn't come up with that. He did. A- a- and said uh, <clears throat> that we, we need to fellowship with one another. And, and Acts, the second chapter, tells us they had fellowship regularly from house to house. And they... Well, we got places here where we connect, but uh, it's good every now and then to get together and, and eat. And so, if you'd like to kind of maybe be part of a group that gets together and share some fellowship with the silver spoon, you can uh, uh, let us know. Use the connection card and say, "Yeah, I'm interested in that. Want to be a part of that?" I've got just a, you may not can hear just a slight feed back up here on the platform. Um, <clears throat> Let's see. Seems like there's some other things happening. Uh, get your outline, and and we're going to get started today on uh, what we believe is the final week. Next week, I plan next week to begin a new series about the Holy Spirit, its power, and its purpose in, in our lives. Uh, we may hold off on that to after uh, Father's Day, but I, probably going to start it next week. Uh, we've been in a series. We're finishing up today. It's on the screen here. If this is your first time to join us online or in the room. Our series is I-Y-K-Y-K, and, and if you're, you don't know what that means, all I can say is, well, if you know, you know, and I hope that helps. <clears throat> have you seen that around anywhere uh, since we've been doing that? Yeah, some of you have. Sent me a picture or two, and, and uh, you've seen somebody post it, and, and, and yeah, right back there, yeah. Oh, oh, billboards. Yeah, okay, well, yeah, let's do a little advertising for him. He needs it. Him and that Shanura guy. Uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, if you know, you know. A- and uh, so we've been talking about that. H- have you had the opportunity to say that every now and then? Somebody said it this morning. Uh, I forget what we were talking about. Maybe in those cookies. If you know, you know. You know, it's just. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, yeah, if you know, you know. We've talked about knowing some things that we are supposed to know. And we're in pursuit of knowing things that we know that we need to know, but we don't know yet, but we're reaching for it. Um, And the past few weeks, we've been talking particularly about some things we think we know that we really don't. And and, and boy, when you you realize that you thought you knew something and you were all fully committed to it, and you realize, you know, it's not quite what I thought, the best thing to do is embrace the fact and let go of the stubbornness that says, ah, no, I know what I believe, and I, you can't convince me otherwise. Uh, uh, you know the truth. The truth will set you free. A- and so uh, we've talked about some facts uh, the last few weeks. We talked talk about some things people put in place of facts, things like hunches and opinions and assumptions and conclusions, and they get us in trouble when we equate them with God's truth. <clears throat> Because how you kind of feel like you get this feeling and this hunch or this what we call the gift of suspicion, and and it isn't always uh, the way that things really are. Then we talked about incidental facts, and then we talked about uh, key facts and God facts. And I really want to focus on the God fact angle uh, of things today. Uh, I put in your outline. Let's fill in the blank, and then and then we're we're going to. uh, kind of talk about this for a little bit. I've got two or three little uh, different phases I want to move into today, and we'll, we'll let you know as we shift. But first, I want to talk about this God fact. and I want uh, Let me just say it to this way. Keep your focus, because you're going to get a lot of facts thrown at you in life, or a lot of things that are presented as facts, and you're going to separate them at, out, and, and then there's these things coming at you, and what do you really focus on when you get a lot of information and some of it seems to be conflicting? Because that's the way it is in life, not just with the jury, like we've seen in the past a little bit. You've got conflicting information or facts. They may all be facts, but they're, they, they lead you to different places if you follow them with a certain lens or filter on or a bias, and we talked about that in the previous week. Keep your focus on the higher fact. I'm going to refer to that higher fact or the highest fact as the God fact. I'm going to talk about the God fact. 
I want to show you in a few places in Scripture where there are more than one fact presented. And, and as we said in our about our second week, sometimes uh, it all depends on which syllable you place the emphasis on. Okay? And so it, it, it appears to you one way or another depending on where you accent or what you put in bold or what you put in a, in a larger font. And so I want you to put in the boldest and the largest font you can the God fact. Okay? So that's what I want you to keep your focus on. Now, in Luke 22, Jesus told Simon Peter, and this was at a very delicate time, here, Jesus is soon to be going away, and he's trying to give some last-minute impartation and instruction to the disciples. And he told Simon Peter a fact that only Jesus could know. He said, Simon, Simon, Satan hath desired that he may sift you as wheat. The devil has a plan for you, and he's after you. And then he gave Peter another fact. This was a higher fact. And he says, but I have prayed for you that your faith won't fail you. And if I could paraphrase just a little bit, you're going to make a mistake, okay? You're, you don't realize it now. You don't think you're capable of it, but you're going to mess up. But after you mess up, you're going to repent. And, and after you repent, you turn back to me. I am going to use you. I'm going to anoint you and empower you. And you are going to strengthen the rest of the brethren. Now, which is the most important fact of the two? Facts are facts, and they're both important. Is it that Satan has a plan for your life, or that God has a plan for your life? And see, both of those are true. But I see too many people locked in and focusing on Satan's plan. And they never get to the higher fact, and that is, but God has a plan. And, and, and the only reason, I think the only reason that, that Jesus is telling Peter that you're going to mess up is because he's going to mess up, but he's not pointing it out to, to point out the mistake or embarrassing him. It, it's, it's your obstacle is just an opportunity for where God's going to take, to take you to. Your setback is just a setup for a comeback. The comeback's what I want to get to, but you can't have a comeback without a setback. And so he's trying to tell him the first part, it is only there to let you be aware that the second part is coming. <clears throat> now, Peter, like most of us, begins to focus on the mistake, and he said, no, wait a minute, I'm not, I, I, I'll never leave you. I, and, and he says, you don't, you don't, look, where I'm going, you can't go. And I, No, not me, I'll go with you everywhere. And he says, Peter, before the sun comes up in the morning, you will have denied me three times. <clears throat> but that's not really important. I know you think it is. I've got good news for you. And the good news is that you are going to be the first to share the good news, the gospel. Okay? <clears throat> so uh, uh, let's, let's talk about where we are. I'll, I'll use me first and you fill in your, your name uh, in, in the blank. <clears throat> I, I've uh, spent my life, most of it, uh, not in perfection because my wife is here and she knows better, <clears throat> but trying to help people get closer to God, helping people discover the eternal life that God has and the abundant life that God has. And let me give you a little fact I learned along the way. Not, not everybody's rooting for me to succeed. Th there are a few people who want me to fail as a pastor. They want me to fail as a person. Some of them are Christian believers. And when I realized that, it, you know, I'm not sure they feel that way, but let me tell you about another fact. <clears throat> there are also a bunch of people that are rooting for me to succeed and who are praying for me to be a successful person and pastor. Which one should I spend my time? Both the facts are true. I no need to deny it and say, everybody, whoo, everybody's full. No, no. In fact, Jesus said, beware if everybody speaks well of you. So, praise God, I don't have to worry about that one. <clears throat> Which one should I spend my time dwelling on, focusing on? Which fact 
You know, I think I should focus on the fact that there are people who are praying for me rather than people who are, okay, take me out of it. In case you're living here, sitting here in ignorance and bliss, I'm sorry to disturb your blissful bubble, but there, not everybody's happy with you. Not everybody at your work or in your classroom, not everybody thinks that you're the best teacher. You are, but they, they don't think you are. <clears throat> there are some people that don't like you. There are some people that when you get a new car, they don't celebrate with you. <clears throat> when you go on vacation, they're like, must be nice. <clears throat> they can't celebrate with you in the nice moments of life. Stop focusing on the fact that not everybody is with you. We've, listen, we've all lost things. Everybody here has been through loss. Some of, I want to go through the things. You know the things you've lost. I learned a long time ago, and I try to practice it, that we're all happier if we focus not on what we've lost, but what we have left. Because if you keep focusing on what you've lost, you'll lose more. You'll lose what you have left. But focus on the ones or the people that, that are in your life and focus on what you have to hold on to. Focus on the higher fact. Let me give you another one. John 16. <clears throat> Jesus says, these things, this is Jesus talking, okay? These things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Now, when some people read this, I don't want to, I haven't read your Bibles, I had not looked over your shoulder. But when some people read that verse, they get their pen and they circle the word tribulation. When I read it, I circle the word overcome. I circle the word good, the words good cheer. I'm going to talk about trials. I'm going to talk about tribulations, but only as the setup for the end result. Are you listening to it? My series. I don't want my series to be the tribulations of the righteous. I want it to be how to be an overcomer. That doesn't mean that we're ignorant that there are tribulations. It means that we're focusing on the higher fact. We're focusing on the greater truth. Hallelujah. I, I'm trying. I believe it is. I told you a few weeks ago, I want to say it one more time. I will mention the Antichrist while I'm preaching. But my focus isn't going to be on the Antichrist. My focus is on Jesus Christ. And, and, and look, I'm not against uh, 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 Bible prophecy. I, I taught uh, quite a bit while I was evangelizing in and, and, and early pastoring days. And, and I, I'm still interested in it. Um, but the Antichrist is not the central character of the Bible. In fact, the Antichrist is not the central character of the book of Revelation. The very first words of John's book is this, the revelation of Jesus Christ. And, and, and when, so we're going we're gonna to start studying Revelation. Ooh, we're going to study the Antichrist. No, we're going to study Jesus Christ. And the story of Revelation is there's a lot of bad guys. There are beasts. There are dragons. There, there's all sorts of things. But when it's all done, they're all defeated, and he's victorious. Focus on the on the truth that 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 he's the he's the the victor. He hasn't lost a battle. Hasn't lost a battle. Say it again. Hasn't lost a battle. We're gonna sing it again. Yeah, we're gonna make sure we all get it. Hadn't lost a battle. Never lost a battle. Never will. Never will. By the way, t two of the two of the problems I have with with uh, most uh, Bible prophecy is this, um, and and again I, I I say this from experience. Problem number one is you become convinced. You've got it all figured out. And, and, boy, I've seen elaborate charts stretched all the way across, and this is where this happens, and, and this happens. And <clears throat> someone said uh, many years ago, they said, if you read over here in Revelation, it says when you get to heaven, there's 30 minutes of silence. And, and yeah, there's 30 minutes of silence. Well, when we get there, it's 30 minutes of silence. And someone said, what's that for? And I heard some, uh, some things I won't uh, bring to you. But one of them was, that's so all the prophecy teachers can change their charts. <laughs> okay, got to give them time to fix it, because they missed They all missed it. <clears throat> um, uh, look, I, I did. Look, I had a, 
guys that were just got married, uh, Jesus went, remember we went fishing, and he caught 153 fish. The Bible says 153 fish. I don't know why it, na- it numbered them like that. 153 fish. Well, praise God, there was 153 nations. And that represented, the, and that was, that was good then, but I think there's like 211 of them now. And so, you know, you know what I'm saying? Boy, when it fits, praise God, this is clear. This is what it is. You better get ready. There's a well, some, sometimes our, our what we just know to be true ain't. If you know, you know, and when you think you know and you don't, now you know that you didn't know. That doesn't change the fact that he's still God and his word's still true and he's not in some kind of little number box that he's got to work it all out just so we can all look good with our predictions. He is who he is and he will be what he was forever and amen. Okay? <clears throat> and, I, and I've been through it all. I mean, uh, I think Henry Kissinger died last year. I think he was 100 years old. And... and until the day he died, there were people saying, he's the Antichrist. I remember when I, was, I had a book at home on why, uh, the man, it's got to make you feel good. So I write the whole book about you, why you were the Antichrist. <coughs> and then some of you too young know this, but, but every, every, almost every president came out. There was Ronald Wilson Reagan. Ronald, six letters. Wilson, six letters. Reagan, six letters. Six, six, six. There's the number right there. He's the Antichrist. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, so, look, some of y'all are like, you don't recognize it. I've been, I've been around, heard all kind of things. When you start focusing on the booger man, you see him in it behind every bush. I mean, everywhere, every shadow was him. You know, everything, every person. Is it, is it Obama? So he, he understands dark sentences. No, no, it's, I don't think it's going to be Biden. But, <clears throat> you, know, you know, everyone came along. You know, everyone, that's him. Well, Praise God, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. And, and I, I said last week, the spirit of Antichrist is, is many in, uh, 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 among us where it is. But the Bible doesn't speak about the individual Antichrist much. We give him a lot more attention than, than, he, than he should get. Here, here's um, 1 John 4 and 4. You, you're of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Is it a fact that he's in the world? Yes. But we're not going to magnify him. In, in, in fact, uh, it's not a coincidence that the word magnify means uh, to make something become larger to you and also means to glorify God. Because I think you do both at the same time. When you magnify him with worship, you also magnify him. You make him bigger in your world. And, and, and I, you know, I'm... I'm not trying to intimidate the devil. I've got enough problems. But I've got enough faith to say this. Great big God, little bitty devil. Great big God, little bitty devil. Okay, we're not going to spend all, we're not going to have a, 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 a 10-week series on, on the power of the devil. We're going to talk about the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Doesn't mean there's not a real devil, but it means he's not going to dominate our conversation and dominate our thought life, and, and he has a plan, Simon, but let me tell you about the greater plan. You're going to make it, you're going to be restored, you're going to be healed, and you're going to bring uh, strength to your brother. Okay, God's facts, in your outline, God's facts are what we call the God factor. Never, never, it's, it's not all the God factor there is, but his word is a large part of the God factor. What God has to say about you and your situation ought to be the main factor in, your, in the decision. Remember uh, uh, Kadesh Barnea when, when the spies went out and they came back? We, we covered that a couple weeks, two or three weeks ago. And, and they brought back all the facts about the, and the giants were there. And, okay, but there's the main factor is God's with us. God's with us. And when we don't take the God factor into our decision about our life and career and the steps we take in faith, we're missing the whole, the exercise that we're doing is an exercise in futility because God's facts are the God factor. Now, in general, a factor refers to something that influences or contributes to a result or outcome. Factors are variables that can have an impact on a situation 
event or process. Nothing influences an outcome more than what God says about it. So let's find out what he says about it. Uh, in 2 Corinthians, uh, or rather, 2 Kings chapter 6, and, and I won't uh, uh, go there and, and read it all for you, I'll just tell you about it. Uh, in 2 Kings 6, 2 Kings 6, in verse number 8, um, the prophet Elijah, uh, uh, Elijah had, rather had, um, he was revealing the war plan of, of this king, and he was not happy about it. And he said, I'm going to go get him. And, and, and somebody tell me where he is. And they said he's in Dothan, over here in Alabama, I guess. That's where he said it was in Dothan. <laughs> what it said. Not the Alabama part. but And, and so, he, so they went down to Dothan. And in the morning times, uh, Eli, Elisha had a servant. And his assistant and, 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 and his servant uh, got in the morning. I don't know if he's getting coffee ready or what. But he went outside and he came back in and he said, uh, Mr. Elisha, we got a problem. I said, what is it? He said, the, the, I'm, I hate to tell you this, but the, the hills are all filled with the army. <laughs> they're, they're after us, and they found us. <laughs> we, we, we got problems. And Elijah didn't even go out. He didn't go out and check it out for himself. He says, there's more with us than there are with them. And he says, look, I appreciate your faith, and, you know, you're the preacher and all that sort of thing, but I just got to tell you, I've been outside. You haven't, okay? I have seen what I have seen. And, and he says, basically, I'm not disputing the fact that you've seen what you've seen. I'm just telling you there are things you haven't yet seen. And if you can see what you haven't seen, well, if you know, you know. And, and his eyes were open. And he saw, and the hills were filled with horses and chariots of fire. And like the prophet said, there's more with us than there are with them. Now the fact is, there was an army there. But there's a higher fact. There's a greater fact. And that's where we, in fact, he couldn't even see that. And sometimes we can't even see that God's at work because of the problems we're facing. The, the obstacle causes us not to be able to see that God is here. God is working. I want you to see that in your life. I want, to, want you to see that in your business. I want you to see that in your, in, in your marriage. I want you to see that in, in your children. Yeah, they, 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 this is not perfect. Yeah, there's a lot of things we would like to see a little, but, but, but God has never lost a battle. He's with us. He's here. We are surrounded by the enemy, but there's something else surrounding us also. Okay, we've talked about the facts as being the evidence. And it is in the physical realm. I want to shift gears just a little bit. I want to finish this out with a, a, a little, another little angle here of this. I told you I would, and let's go. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence, you want to circle word, circle, underline, evidence of things not seen. Fact are the evidence of things seen. But faith is the evidence of things not seen. Faith is believing in something that can't be seen just as strongly or more so than believing in what you can see. Again, faith, it says, is evidence of what is not seen. So let me give you these four blanks here together in succession. Facts deal with the visible realm. Faith deals with the invisible realm. Facts deal with the physical realm. Faith deals with the spiritual realm. Say that again for you. Facts deal with the, with the visible. Faith deals with the invisible. Facts deal with the physical. Faith deals with the spiritual. Faith, because most of us have to have the facts. That's because we're walking beside it. But faith is evidence in the invisible realm just as facts are evidence in the physical realm. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, the short verse we just alluded to, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Sight is where we get our facts. Our senses report to us the facts. We saw it. We heard it. 
We took it in. We were there. We experienced it. Our senses told us these are the facts. Now, what, <clears throat> what I learned a long time ago, it took me a while, and I still slip in this, is that some people confuse faith and sight. We pray for something. We pray for it. We pray for it. And then it begins to materialize. And then we say something like this, my faith is getting stronger. You ever said that? My faith is getting strong. No, that's really not, I don't think that's accurate. I, I think more accurately, we would say, my faith is being rewarded. My sight's getting stronger because I can see it. Faith is when you can't see it. Does that make any sense to you? You're, I mean, my spirit feels stronger, but his spirit was never weak. You don't need faith for what you, can't, for, for what you can see. If you can see it, you don't need faith for Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Uh, Romans 8 and 24 and hope and faith are, are, are similar, and I'll show you the separation in a moment. For we're saved by hope, but a hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, what doth he yet hope for? What are we going to hope for if we already had it? Actually, let me separate them and say hope primarily, I believe, is for the future, and faith is primarily for the present. Well, it says now faith. I don't think he's saying now faith is, I think he says now faith is the substance. I mean right now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is for the heart, if you please. Hope is for the mind. Let me show you 1 Thessalonians 5 and 8 says, but since we belong to the day, he said there, there are people of the day and people of the night. We're not people of the night or darkness, he said. We're, we're children of the day. And since we belong to the day, let us be sober, let us be self-controlled, putting on faith and love as a breastplate to protect the heart and the hope of salvation as a helmet for the mind. So the breastplate of faith protects the heart, the helmet of hope, hope protects the mind. Now, what happens is your faith, and a songwriter saw this, faith results in sight. I know it's not where we draw our theology, but Horatio Spafford wrote the song and said, Oh, Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight. That's when the clouds be rolled back as a scroll, for the trumpet shall sound and the Lord shall descend. Even so it is well. With my soul, it's well right now because I know that one day my faith, what I can't see, is telling me it's, I'm going to see it. It shall be sight. And so you keep having your faith until you see it. I don't see it yet. Well, that's what faith is for. I, 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 it's not there. Well, that's what faith is for. That's why he said, Simon, I'm praying your faith won't fail you. Because you won't be able to see the end result. You're going to be in a situation and say, I don't see how this can possibly work out. I don't see how this can get any better. I, I, I don't see how it can possibly improve. This is the end of it all. I, I'm, I'm about to go bankrupt. We're about to split. I, this, this just ain't going to work. We can't get out of this debt mountain we're under. Okay, faith sees something different. You're looking at facts, but there's a higher fact. Somebody listen to me. Somebody listen to me this morning. There's a higher fact. God, always remember, God has access to facts that can't be accessed or understood by what is visibly seen. And that's why we need to hear the whisper of the Spirit. I don't want to get into next week. But we need to let the Spirit lead and guide us because He knows where to go. Let me throw this out while I'm here. One of the greatest tools the devil has that he brings to us is doubt. And what he causes us or tries to get us to doubt is what God has already said. Thou shalt not surely die. Now, wait a minute. That's not what he said. Oh, but that's not. Let me, if I put a little seed in here. And so when Jesus responded, he responded with the higher facts. Yes, but it is written. Yes, but it is written. Let me give you the higher fact. I understand what you're saying, okay? But let me give you a higher fact than what you're presenting to me. That's why you need to know the word of God. Okay, 
Bailey, get, get ready, get ready. I'm not done, but I'm getting close. My, 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 my timer went out back here. It says no signal. I think it's about 1030, so I've got plenty of time. Okay. Usually there's a clock back there. There's no clock. God's with me. There's a higher fact. The higher fact is, y'all want <laughs> Uh, let me get off the word just a minute and tell you about something happened. Marcus's dad, I may have told you this, Marcus's dad uh, pastored in Miami, Florida. I preached for him many years ago. Marcus was the youth pastor slash music uh, uh, leader there, and I was the evangelist, came in, and his dad was just an incredible guy, pastored down there for many, many years. Great man, and he was a spiritual Man, a real praying man, but he, he didn't always present himself that way. You know, he didn't come on, I'm real spiritual. He did pick and, and, and have fun with you. And sometimes you didn't know when he was serious. And so that first Sunday I preached there, he said, Now, David, let, let, me, let me tell you something. I don't want you to grieve the Spirit. I want you to follow the leading of the Spirit, and you preach as long as you want to. But I also need to tell you, the people are going to get up and go home at 12. That's what he said. <laughs> And you know what? The Bible said a, a little hint, a word of the wise is sufficient. I, I said, okay, I'll, I'll, that, that's a good way. You know, I, I know how to be done on time. So, so uh, I listened to him. You know, you can only uh, learn the mind can only absorb what the feet can endure. I'm, I, I'm not just interested in sharing a set of facts each week. But more importantly, what I've discovered to be the truth. Because sometimes facts don't quite reach to where truth is. Throw this out here and leave it with you. Chew on. Heaven is not a myth. Heaven really isn't a fact. A fact is verifiable. A fact is observable. A fact is measurable. A fact is tangible. Heaven's not a fact, because I can't today take you there and show you and y'all say, well, yeah, he's right, there it is. Heaven's higher than a fact. Heaven's a truth. And it's truth because God's word is truth and God's word tells us. We, do you get that? We are saved by grace through faith. Salvation's not a fact. It's higher than that. It's a truth. Some things I can't prove in a court of law. I don't want to get ahead of myself to my next series, but I want to tell you the Holy Spirit, if you know, you know. Ephesians 1 and 13. I, I didn't get a tangible certificate when I got saved. But the Word of God says I got... I got one, and it's got a seal on it. And you also were included Christ in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. For you've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. How, how can I know? I can't show it to you as a fact. But I can say what he said. We have this treasure in this earthen vessel. We've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, the spirit itself bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. That's how I know. It's not, it's, I, can't, I, I can't show you it all, but I can tell you, if you know, you know. The spirit itself bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. 
It's almost finished. Come on. Come on. Before the clock comes up and I find out how bad off I am. The truth is not just a set of facts. The truth is a person. Jesus Christ. And if you come to know the truth, the truth will set you free. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. That's the truth. Let's stand together. Lift your hands with me toward heaven and receive what he has right now. Father, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the truth. It's higher than what facts prove it to be. You've put inside of us something that causes us to know this world's not all there is. There are things, Lord, I can't prove, but I know. I know that my Redeemer lives. I know in whom I have believed. And I trust you, and I know that I can. And those, Lord, who have experienced in their lives the similar renewal in their life, the regeneration of your Holy Spirit, the, the surrender of their life to you and experience you coming through and being their comforter and healer and redeemer. Father, they know. And thank you, Lord, for those who are the redeemed. For they know they know and they shall not be shaken. Yes, Lord. Just receive it today. like prayer, want me to pray with you, I'll, I'll linger here and pray with you. But I say to you what the song says, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, cause his face to shine upon you, the Lord be gracious unto you. I say to you, when you walk outside today, and you feel the sun, you feel the warmth of his presence. God's here, and he's with you. In Jesus' name.